in, in residence life. Um, and um, I've been out on the East Coast uh, for the majority of my career. So, um, what's needed there for to continue? Sorry. Um, and um, so I uh, um, have worked in, in higher ed for over 20 years now. Um, and like I said, primarily in, in student activities, leadership development. My area of um, uh, that I oversee um, includes traditional kind of student activities and leadership development type stuff. Um, as far as um, clubs and organizations, student leadership. Um, I've overseen orientation um, in the past. My role also oversees the um, recreate. We have a, a recreation center with club sports and murals um, and a full gym, you know, rec center, um, fitness and, and all that kind of stuff um, as well. I also do a lot in the student conduct area. Um, and um, so doing, um, a lot of work uh, with with student conduct. I tend to be the um, lead conduct officer whenever we have a, a large case on campus, um, and so that has been certainly some some interesting uh, part of my work, uh, especially with all the new Title IX regulations that have been um, going on and and all that kind of stuff. So, so that's certainly another um, kind of challenge uh, that I've I've been doing throughout my career. Um, well, especially at Central Connecticut State. Um, I am uh, currently um, about, hopefully by the end of February, I will be finishing my dissertation and um, then I will be Dr. Uh, Hazen, but you can still call me Scott. So um, nobody will ever call me Dr. Hazen. So unless somebody really pisses me off and I want to prove a point, but um, so, um, and I am, uh, uh, I've grown up on the East Coast my whole life. I've actually um, uh, was in Kansas City once, I think, for a conference uh, a long time ago um, and uh, had a lot of fun there. Um, so I don't know much about uh, your school, unfortunately. Um, but um, one of the things that I would love to do is we have a, a fairly small group here. Um, so. Uh, and I certainly um, appreciate you guys taking time, um, you know, to do this and to, I think it's really important. Professional development is, is critical. Um, getting to know other people um, in the field um, is something that I think is, is really critical. And so I would like to get to know you all a little bit better as um, I know most of you are, um, I, I think there's a couple of professors online, but um, uh, the students, you know, you are going to be our colleagues um, in this field shortly. Um, and I always want to know more people in this field. So what I'd love to do is go around uh, this Zoom call and, and uh, if you guys can introduce yourself and maybe with, um, with one sentence kind of uh, what your goals are for, for higher ed. I know that's a, a tall order there, um, but what kind of areas you might like to work in um, and then what you hope to get out of this call. Um, you know, and then if we could do that, that would be great. So um, I think the easiest way to always do this in a Zoom call is I'll kind of call out a name and then you can, you can go and I'll just kind of go around the screen. Um, or we can do it in the way of, you know, I'll call out the first name um, and then you guys can pass it to somebody else, okay? So um, I see uh, the first name, uh, is it Christiana? Is that correct? Uh, Christiana, yeah. <laughs> Christiana? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, hi everybody, I'm Christiana, um, my first semester in the program, currently the student recruitment coordinator for the College of Arts and Sciences. I work with first time freshmen um, who are interested in any of our programs in, in CAS. Um, wow, what are goals? Um, big question. Um, I, I'm really interested in, I really like what I do right now. And so I do have aspirations and dreams to, you know, tackle different um, roles in recruitment. Um, so I would say that's probably where I'd like to start with my goals. <laughs> um, okay, I'm calling on somebody. Um, Erin, would you like to go? <laughs> yeah, I'll go ahead and go. So yeah, my name's Erin. Um, this is my second semester in the master's of of arts and higher education program at UMKC. I work at UMKC as an academic advisor um, in the School of Computing and Engineering and long-term goals. I'd love to stay within um, STEM organizations, catering to STEM students in some capacity. Um, I admire my boss's role as like an assistant dean kind of tackling numerous uh, uh, umbrella of things that she kind of does. And I, that, that's something that I admire and could be a future goal. Um, I want to get out of the call, just expand my network and learn more about the field. It's always good to just kind of sit back and listen. Great. 
You have to pass it to somebody. You need to pass it. I'm Taryn. Okay. Um, I'm Taryn. I am in my second semester of the higher education administration program. Um, right now, I'm the women's basketball graduate assistant, and that's kind of my, not my goal to be a GA, but um, to stay in athletics and just somewhere along those lines. I don't know if that's like an athletic director or Title IX coordinator or something like that, but just something with athletics and um, kind of same as Aaron said, I just like networking and um, I haven't got to experience like grad school in person. So any opportunity I get to, you know, be with people in my program is, is fun and I like to do that. So I will pass it to Sam. Hello, my name is Sam Weiss. Uh, I'm in my fourth semester in the master's program for higher education administration. Currently, I serve as a GA with the Office of Student Involvement, working with the Kangaroo Food Pantry on campus. Um, I think for goals, you know, I'm hoping to finish strong in the program and then turn that into some kind of position in the near future. Uh, I think academic advising is where I'd like to turn to, but uh, there's all sorts of different jobs within higher ed. So I'm open to wherever it takes me. Uh, I'll pass it to Sarah. Hello, I am Sarah, and I also work as a graduate assistant in the Office of Student Involvement. My focus is events and entertainment, so I work on student programming with Kim, who's also in this call, and um, and I work with our union programming board, which is a student group that creates events on campus. Um, my future goals, I really am interested in academic support, so I have a lot of background in um, peer mentoring and supplemental instruction, so I would love to work in a program and eventually be a coordinator for one of those types of programs. And then just out of this call, since you work in student activities, I would love to hear more about what you guys are doing in a virtual environment to navigate and keep students involved on campus. You have to throw it to somebody. Yeah, I know, I realized that after. Um, Brian. Hello, I'm Brian Woodson. Um, this is my second semester, like several others. So I'm in the master's program. Um, currently, I'm working at another institution, um, currently in financial aid um, as a coordinator. And today was my first day um, in a kind of higher up version of financial aid because I work at an institution that has a that work that financial aid is basically in the cave, like a literal underground cave. And so now I'm actually with the students and seeing them face to face. So I'm the, the face of financial aid, go figure. But um, I um, eventually I want to work um, with adult learners. So advising and support and also the admissions process. I myself was an adult learner. And so um, I believe that we are the forgotten um, demographic sometimes. And so um, just through my experience as an adult learner and then um, entering the the master's program, um, a, a lot of things I had to navigate on my own. So to be able to be that testament and that support to adult learners is my ultimate goal. Um, out of this call, just a network like other people have said, um, is very hard in the COVID times. And so um, I believe that any opportunity to meet others in the field is a great opportunity. I, thought I was the last one, I'm sorry. Um, Dr. RP. Oh, um, well, I'm Dr. RP. Uh, you can call me Tiffany. Um, students can call me Tiffany or Dr. RP, which is short for Rigger's Peel. Um, it's just easier to spell RP um, and say. Uh, I am in my fourth year um, here at UMKC in the higher ed program. My background in student affairs spans um, working in athletics. I was a coordinator of football operations and the senior women's administrator in a small division three at a small division three college. And then I also worked in spiritual life and in student assessment at um, two different uh, larger universities, public and private. And so I have a lot of different university experience. Um, I'm just really excited. Uh, first of all, I'm the advisor for HESA, he said, and I'm excited that um, they're thinking about different ways to engage the students and our community and uh, expanding their network. But also I'm uh, looking forward to hearing about uh, your background, Scott, and how um, I always love learning from other places and what they're doing and gleaning ideas um, for what we can do in our program and in my own classes. So I'm excited about that. Um, Brittany, did I, did we hear from you? No. <laughs> Go ahead, Brittany. 
I, I didn't think so. I want to make sure that we get to hear from you. Yeah, so my name is Brittany. I'm on my second semester of the higher education administration degree track. Um, like Taryn, um, I'm really liking these events because it's kind of nice to have some connectivity during these COVID times when unfortunately we're not on campus. Um, I currently serve as the GA for the study abroad and global engagement office. Um, so one of my main tasks is to reach out to students to make them aware of their perspectives, which is actually a lot more difficult during COVID, especially when students obviously know international travel isn't going on at this moment. Um, I would love to stay in the field of international education when I graduate. Um, it's really something I'm passionate about. Um, but what I'm really looking forward to getting out of this call is just networking like everyone else, but also to see some new ideas about how to stay connected with students during COVID. And I forgot, like everyone else, um, I'll pass it on to uh, Dr. Mayo. <laughs> Hi there, I'm Michelle Maher. I've been uh, at UMKC and going into my, or in my sixth year um, and really enjoying UMKC. I love the fact that it's small enough that you can get to know everybody on campus, um, but big enough that it's, it's, it's pretty powerful in terms of teaching and research. It's got a lot, a lot going on. Um, and uh, previously I was a, at a larger institution. I enjoyed that too. Um, not as much as I enjoy UMKC, I must say. And uh, I'm looking forward to, you know, I have to admit um, teaching online this semester when everybody is just so online all the time. I'm probably here lurking around, not just to simply support HESA, but also to gleam some ideas that I might be able to use um, because the screen has become my constant companion. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure everybody kind of feels that way in terms of, ugh, not more screen time. But anyways, that's what I've got going on. Kim, <laughs> it's you, man. Hi, you said Kim, right? <laughs> okay. I did. Hi folks, sorry, I was um, getting my little one to bed. So I was, we were saying goodnight individually to every single stuffed animal this evening, um, but it was great. Uh, I'm Kim Kushner. Um, I am the Assistant Director of New Student and Family Programs and I work with Sarah and with Sam in the Office of Student Involvement. And I am a current second semester doctoral student. So um, just learning all the things. Um, and I'm interested in um, religion, spirituality, and secular student identity development and uh, figuring that out in that functional area, especially with um, student activities, Greek life, et cetera. Um, yeah, and I've worked at a lot of different places and residence life, um, student leadership, uh, uh, religious and spiritual programming, um, and currently uh, work a lot with parent and family programs and retention and transition uh, programming at our institution. Who has not gone yet? I think we had just had somebody join us. Evans looks like they just joined us. Oh, fantastic. And so Evans, so if you can, we, if uh, you can just quickly introduce yourself and just tell us what you hope to get out of this call and, and uh, what you're doing in, uh, in, in, I'm not sure if Evans is a faculty member or a student. Uh, Evans is a student. He's a student in our master's program. I'm not sure if he can hear us yet. I see on my end it says connecting to audio. So yep. we may, we might need to circle back to him in a minute, but. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. So thank you all for introducing yourselves. It's really just, you know, in these type of environments, it's it's really appreciated, you know, to try to get to know a little bit, you know, about somebody, um, you know, and and like, you know, people said, the screen time is, is you know, become a nightmare. Um, and, you know, so one of the things that we like to try and do is, is have a little bit of fun um, with our screen time. So one of the things we do, we've been doing at our, at our meetings, our staff meetings, um, is I'm gonna share my screen real quick. Uh, Oh, it says host disabled participation screen sharing. Is there a way to enable that? Okay, it should be fixed now. Okay, cool. Did it work now? Yeah. Okay, give me one second. It will work in a second. I just want to set something up. Hey, Evans, we're coming back around to you in just a minute here. Okay. I'll be sure. Okay. 
Cancel that for a second. Sorry, I'm coming around here. We can. Okay. So hopefully you guys are going to see this in a second. And I think I got everybody in there. Um, can everyone see that on this screen? So one of the things that we've been doing is uh, we've been uh, having just fun little, we call it, they're duck races. Um, and basically it is nothing more than 15 seconds of cheering on your duck um, that is nicely decorated by the computer. I did nothing for it. Um, but so let's, here we go. Let's see what happens. Let's see who wins. There are no prizes, I'm sorry. But let's see who gets there first. And Sarah is taking an early lead. Brian, not too far behind. I'm coming up there. Erin is making a run. If I win, oh, and it looks like Sarah takes the win. So again, we just do little silly things like that to break up some of the monotony of our meetings um, because it can get very, um, the screen time is tough. Um, everybody is struggling with it. Um, I think, and, and so it's, it's certainly not only you all, obviously we've, we've heard it from students, we've heard it from um, faculty members, administrators. Um, it it kind of sucks, I'll be honest, after a while, you know, and excuse my language, I'm from the Northeast, I grew up in New York, um, I tend to curse, you're all adults. If I offend anybody, I really apologize, I'll try and do, I'll be on my best behavior um, today. Um, so, but, um, you know, growing up in New York, um, I was around a lot of bad language as a kid. So um, I apologize. So Evans, I, I see you here. Um, I, I certainly want to um, hear from you. If you want to introduce yourself real quick, um, that'd be great. Uh, you hear me? Yes. Yes. Thank you. I've, in fact, I've been trying all this time to get uh, into the screen. That's why I know that I was late. Uh, I've been, uh, since 7 30, I've been trying to get in, but eventually I've found it in the, the laptop I had, the camera was not working, so I had to use a different one. But, okay, let me start in by introducing myself. Uh, my name's uh, Evans Omega, and uh, I come from Kenya. And uh, currently, I'm a student at UMKC taking master's in higher education. And uh, Ms. Dr. Michelle Meyer is my academic advisor. She's there. <laughs> yeah, when I came here, I, I was sent over to her and she has been advising me all through this course up to where now I've reached and currently I'm taking my internship in the Office of Multicultural Student Affairs, which is during the Student Union. And uh, uh, Mr. Roland Hemmings is my site uh, supervisor. And this is that week since we started our internship. So that's all I can say. But what I expect out of uh, this internship is that uh, I would like to get the scale and the knowledge that which could enable me to be a good reader in Fiji. Because I'm intending to go back to my country, I expect it to relay back home what I've acquired from UMKC. Very good. Thank you for introducing yourself, and and I really appreciate that. Um, so. Um, again, I'll, I'm going to start the conversation off, and, and when I spoke to Sarah uh, about, you know, what I guess what we were going to discuss today, we talked a lot about, you know, um, virtual programming and, and what we were doing, you know, at Central and, and all that. And um, one of the things I think that uh, we had done pretty well as we started, um, we, we were really fortunate. Um, one of my team members um, uh, in our department, uh, we had an opportunity to use Microsoft Teams before COVID ever started. Um, and so uh, we were one of the pilot programs for um, at our university for Teams. They're like, hey, do you guys want to try this out? And my uh, this woman in my uh, office was like, yes, let's do it. I've had experience at another institution. And so she set us up really well. So we were on Teams way before COVID ever started. Um, so that um, so if COVID started, uh, what was it, in, in, in kind of February, March, we were using um, teams that previous summer. 
um, and starting to use it. And, and it wasn't like we were fully involved with it, but we had a good understanding with it. Um, and then when COVID hit and everyone's like, oh, we got to get on teams. We're like, oh, this is great. We're, we're ahead of the game. Um, we were a little bit ahead of the curve um, there. So that, that certainly helped us kind of, um, kind of jump the bar a little bit and, and, and get going. Um, and so we were very quickly able to get our student groups. Um, every one of our student groups uh, at Central um, has their own Teams page um, and account. Um, and they are all, um, I shouldn't say all, the ones that are active are really doing well on it. Um, and, but we've also lost a lot. I'll be really honest. We've lost a lot of clubs. Um, you know, we, we traditionally have about 150 organizations on campus um, that are pretty, pretty active. And we're currently probably at about, you know, anywhere from 80 to 90 active clubs on teams right now. Um, from what I understand, that's not terrible, um, right, in, in this environment. Uh, and so, you know, we're also down a lot of students as well. Um, so our, our university went from, we're fairly, just to give you kind of a demographic of our university, we're about, in pre-COVID, we're about 12,000 um, students we have about usually about 7,500 full-time undergrads and another 2,000 or so part-time students uh, and about 2,200 students that live on campus generally. Um, so we're down to about 750 students that live on campus right now. Um, and we're also probably down to probably close to like 9,000, a little over 9,000, you know, students total, including full and part-time. So, so we're down a lot of students as well. Um, and so that's been challenging uh, to say the least, uh, as far as budget constraints go. Um, it's really taken a, certainly a big hit um, to our budgets. Um, so that has been somewhat what challenging, but when we started doing virtual programming, we started early. Um, I, I like to brag and, and I don't, I don't, brag often, but um, we were probably the first college, um, and I think we did it um, in the end of March or beginning of April to do a virtual concert with a live artist, um, specifically for our college. Um, and so we, um, we, we did it, we got about 600 students to get online for, for the concert. It was not well produced. It was not, um, you know, I wouldn't say it was well done. Um, the artist was new at it, we were new at it, um, but we did it and, and, and it seemed to work and we got some, some decent feedback, um, you know, on it. So that was really kind of interesting um, to start to start that off. Our programming board wanted to do a spring concert. You know, they've always done a spring concert. Um, and we're like, all right, we're gonna figure out how to make this happen. Um, and so we did. Um, and, you know, I think one of the things with, with virtual programming that people get really nervous about um, is the, you know, uh, there's the production value of it, but people coming, like, you know, our, our numbers are down, you know, so, um, you know, I see some shaking heads and some people involved in student uh, involvement, you know, the numbers are down. And what I would say is, is right now, don't, don't be so concerned about it. Um, you know, learn how to do the production side of it really, really well um, and focus on, on some of that. Um, that to me is, is you know, um, this isn't gonna last forever, I, I would say, but some of these aspects will, some of these things that we're doing will last forever. And I think the production value and where people go wrong a lot um, is they don't produce, they don't produce the events um, well. And so, you know, like even in, in Zoom, and I don't know what type of events you folks have done on your campus and stuff like that, um, but even in um, like a Zoom or a Teams, you know, there's different kinds of, of events. And I'm curious, if, are you guys using like, um, so there's team meetings, you know, like we're having like this kind of a meeting in Teams, but there's also live events and there's live WebEx events. And um, are you guys using, you know, those live features? Are you using multi-camera shoots to do things if you're presenting, you know? Um, and then there's all kinds of things like encoders you can use. And if I'm talking way out of line, you know, let me know. But um, there's all different kinds of production that you can do to make those look more professional um, for, for the students when you're producing um, events. And so we got really into the production side of things um, and we started trying to produce more high quality events. And we found when they're produced well, um, that more students usually, you know, will attend, um, you know, those events. Um, 
And so that's one of the things that I think um, people really, um, we got involved with, with early on and, and trying to figure out the production value um, and getting on teams to say, okay, there's the event side of teams and then there is the, um, just the meeting teams. And one of the things that really you know bugs me, and I don't know if if, it, if you guys have noticed it, if you if you've done like WebEx meetings or you know you do you know everyone's into like doing like panels and discussions and and that kind of stuff online, and when you're in a WebEx and they do it as a meeting, um, it's like that constant beeping of people coming in and out of the meeting um, that drives me crazy, um, and so when you do it as a, as a WebEx event or a live Teams event, that doesn't happen because people, it's, it's, it's completely separated. There's a complete, the, the production value of it is, is different. There's a different way to produce it. Um, so I think that, you know, if we can, you know, one of the things that we've done really well or help the university out in student activities is um, we've made ourselves value by helping other departments produce events. Um, we've helped them, you know, uh, so a faculty member wants to do a lecture on something, you know, we'll work with them to teach them how to how to do some of the production value, um, you know, of that. Um, or we'll team up with them, you know, to, to co-sponsor an event because they don't know some of the expertise and, and not picking on the faculty in here, um, but some of the, the faculty and you guys, because you work with higher ed students are probably much better, but some of the faculty, they just don't know. They don't know the technology. And so that's how we can be of service you know, kind of to the to the faculty and get them um, engaged with um, some of the, the software. Um, so um, let me stop for a second and, and see if anybody has any any questions. And it doesn't have to be about online stuff. It could be anywhere in, in student activities. And then I can talk about some other stuff. I see Aaron has a hand up. Oh, I had a question about the teams you mentioned. Like, so do you all have like, well, I guess I use Teams, but like, do you have like, do you moderate them or did, did they independently create them? Or how do you like uh, post something so that all the students can see or like, what does the average student see in like the Teams group? So each, um, so the way that we did it is if, you know, so like you have your Teams page. And so I don't know at, at your school, like, you know, you have your page and if it's linked to, I'm sorry, what department do you work in again? Uh, it's computing and engineering. Okay, so does computing and engineering have their own Teams page that you guys are on? I just have my my like little pod of people that I work with. Okay, so each each club has their own pod. So if we have you know like the um, psychology club, they have their own Teams page. You know, our our SGA has their own Teams page. The program board they have their own Teams page. So everybody, every single club, we have like almost ninety of them now that have their own page. And so what we do is we have in our office, um, we, have, um, we have graduate assistants just like you all um, that, um, that work and they are program advisors. So each one of them has you know, a, a group of you know, 25 or 30 different clubs that they oversee um, along with professional staff in the office. And each one of them is assigned as a program advisor to a club. And so they're in each team as well. So we can kind of see what's going on there. Um, and do that, but that's how they do their meetings um, in in their in their pods. Um, there, um, they can do programming um, within there as well. Um, and then, if they want to do larger programs, we'll help them to set up the technology, you know, to do that. But one of the things that we think is going to be really interesting when, when hopefully we go back to a, a somewhat normal environment one day. Um, that we think that teams will still exist um, very, you know, we, we know it's gonna still exist. So we see it, you know, we're hopefully all of the um, meeting rooms will be capable of, of doing both. So there'll be 15 people maybe in a meeting room and another 20 online um, and they'll be having meetings um, that way. I don't see that ever going away at this point, especially because we're a more commuter, commuter school. Um, so we will constantly be using Teams um, in this environment um, in some format, I believe, for, for a long time. And I think that we probably should, you know, especially if you work in a commuter environment, um, you know, it's not always easy for a commuter student to come back at eight o'clock at night for, for a meeting. Um, so I think it opens up a lot of opportunity for commuter students, adult learners um, to get involved um, 
in some of these things that they normally would not have been able to. So, you know, we call it in our institution, um, these high flex environments, um, better known as hybrid, why our school decided to go with high flex, um, I'm not sure. Um, I guess it's a term out there, um, but, um, so we have a lot of high flex environments um, and they are um, in the programming world, in the classroom, obviously, um, and uh, we'll continue to use them um, once this whole pandemic is over. So other questions. So the other big thing that, that we do a lot of is, and I'm sure that you all are too, and, and this is where our students are at, is social media. Um, we, we do just a ton of social media contests almost on a, on a daily basis. Um, and um, we also are, um, you know, everything we do is, is marketed through social media, primarily through Instagram. Um, we have, you know, um, we have thousands of followers on, on our Instagram pages. Um, and that's how we do a lot of our, our, our advertising. Um, our recreation is huge on, on, our, on our social media. They do a lot of live um, events on social media where they're doing fitness classes um, on social media. Um, they're doing you know, a lot, whole bunch of participation type of events um, on social media. Um, and so we do, you know, it, it's just constant. Um, and we're fortunate to have some very good graduate interns who run my social media um, because I'm not the person um, to do that. Uh, that's not my expertise in any way, shape or form. Um, but we use things like, um, you know, Hootsuite. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with that type of a program, um, but, you know, so we can pre-program things. So, you know, every, you know, even on the weekends, things are coming out constantly and, um, and all that kind of stuff. And so social media has, has been a, has been a big um, thing, but it's not only just about like, you know, posting, you know, advertisements in there. Like we, we try and make our social media as interactive, you know, as possible um, with, with social media contests and we give away, a ton of prizes. So, you know, we're constantly giving away a $50 gift card to Amazon, you know, if you participate in this social media, you know, um, you know, contest. So we'd had, um, you know, the other day we, we gave out, I think a thousand, um, our, our mascot is the blue devil. Um, so if you all remember as kids, you had like flat Stanley, did you all do that? Um, and um, so you had to take flat Stanley around with you wherever you went. And so we had our Kaiser, who is our mascot, it's our blue devil. And we gave out like a thousand flat Kaisers. Um, so people can take pictures of them um, around campus and wherever they go. And then we gave out, we give out money for contests. You know, we will give out gift cards, Amazon gift cards, we'll give out bookstore gift cards. Um, to get people to, to participate. And that seems to work. Um, and again, we're not like getting thousands of participants. So I don't want you to think that, that it is. If we get, you know, 50 people or 100 people to participate in a social media contest, that's great. Um, you know, because those 100 people participated, which is great, but, you know, there's probably a few thousand people that saw those people participating, which is, which is also really um, good. Um, so those are, um, you know, some of the things, um, you know, that we have been been doing with our um, social media. Um, where are you guys at? I'm curious to hear, like, where where are you all at with with programming, um, with uh, um, virtual programming? Um, you know, we are um, doing a lot of. I would say a lot of virtual programming, but we are also doing some on ground programming as well um, when we can, um, when we're allowed to. And, and you know, when obviously with social distancing, um, you know, I don't know what uh, the environment is like there. And so I'm curious to hear from you all um, what the environment is like and how your virtual programming is going. Um, so anybody want to jump in? Um, I can talk about it. So um, we kind of have a lot of restrictions at UMKC right now and for in-person programming. So you can only have 10 people um, in a setting at a time. So mostly we're focused on virtual, but we do have some, we've done, Kim has coordinated a lot of good um, make and take activities so that 
for example, they did a vision board where they could pick up a vision board activity and then online they would all do it together if they wanted to attend. Mm -hmm. um, so we're kind of trying to find ways to encourage people to be on campus, but also com like com participate in the virtual environment. Mm -hmm. We, we did a similar thing with like a paint night. So we gave out, we were allowed to have 25 people in one room and then we gave out like another um, 40 or 50 pickups that they could pick up the, the paint supplies and take it back to their room. And and then we did like a virtual paint night, which, which went over pretty well. Um, so that was fun. But what else, what are you hearing from students? You know, are they burnt out? Do they not care? Do they just wanna, you know, what, what, what are they, what are you hearing? Personally, through the study abroad office, because of COVID, and students know that programs aren't happening, at least until fall 21 for all school, it's really hard to like make a lasting connection because mm -hmm. at least right now, because of so much planning that goes into having a semester abroad, students are like, why should I start planning for this right now? I believe some students also, we work a lot with Pell Grant recipient students to allow them to help them study abroad and to afford it. And right now, because of COVID, um, a lot of students already who were receiving Pell Grants are having further budgetary constraints. So I think it's just a disconnect right now. And like I mentioned, everything's virtual to our office, uh, which already makes it more difficult to outreach to students because all business hours are kind of constrained. So most of our events take place during the school day, um, especially since I'm the operator of the event. So I only have so many hours I can do. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just finding a time that works during the school week to actually reach out to students, especially our main target group, to mm -hmm. really let them know the opportunities are still there, just right now it's not taking place. Mm. Yeah, that's just got to be challenging. I mean, you know, when I when you first said that you worked for the study abroad, I'm like, yeah, our office, I mean, it's just, it's just impossible right now. It's just really difficult to do. So I give you a lot of credit for, for sticking with it there. And, and that's, that's got to be one of the more challenging. I mean, your whole your whole thing is to travel. And so that is, that is definitely, you know, a, a challenge right now. So keep up the, keep up the work though. It will change. I promise this will go away. Have you all done any, like um, we, we've done a lot of, uh, obviously it's a little harder now as the weather gets chillier, um, but we did a lot of like drive-in type of events. Um, you know, we did drive-in movies and, and those kind of things. Were they allowing you to do that kind of stuff? We did a drive-in for Week of Welcome in the fall, and it went pretty well for our first like um, in-person event in the fall. And then we did some a movie night with the Union Programming Board where people could walk up and watch it, mm -hmm. and that actually went over well. And then I'm actually planning one for we have court warming, which is kind of like homecoming mm -hmm. in April, and so we're planning to do something with that too. But yeah, yeah the best on-ground program that we did um, was fireworks. Um, and we were able to you know, spread everybody out because they can see them from all over. Um, and so we were able to kind of spread people out all over campus. But we had, you know, this sounds bad, but they were really spread out, I promise. Like, you know, we had several hundred people throughout campus, um, you know, uh, watching fireworks. And we got a lot of good feedback, you know, on that. And so it's, it's really just you know, trying to be creative. Um, and, you know, with our, we're trying to plan our spring concert now, um, moving forward. And our, you know, it's, we're allowed to have a few more people. So, you know, depend, it's really based on the size of the venue and so capacity. So we have some venues that we're allowed to put 100 people in, some venues we're allowed to put 150 people in, you know. Um, so we have several of those kind of venues on campus. So for our spring concert, which will not be live, um, it will be virtual, but we're hoping to get you know, 150 people in one area and 100 people in another watching together at least the the virtual concert. Um, and so we'll, we'll we'll see what happens um, there. Um, but it sounds like we have a little bit less restrictive, you know, than you all do. Um, so we'll see what happens there. But what else um, is going on? I'm curious, Kim, I, I know you're um, a faculty member or a staff member, um, you know, uh, how has your staff been, been, been handling this? How, is, how are the student groups doing? I'm just curious to hear from another institution. I can learn from you all as well. Yeah, apologies if you hear a crying baby in the background. That's no not going very well tonight. Um, <laughs> um, but I think it's, it's been, um, it's, 
our campus is newly navigating parents and families as retention um, partners. And um, this is quite the year to explore that um, new partnership uh, because our parents and families are expecting a very traditional um, type of campus experience. And I, um, I'm trying to, and Sarah and Sam again can probably speak to this, um, managing expectations in just a proactive manner with that population and really um, collaborating with our campus partners to really help them. Um, and then also just sharing information simultaneously. So when Sarah or Sam or anybody else kind of puts stuff out, really making sure that our families understand that we're, um, doing good programming. Cause a lot of their students think nothing is ever happening on campus or I have to do everything virtually or, you know, or they're feeling lonely or, um, and, you know, they're going to their families sometimes to talk to them about it. And so mm. I think we've been um, continuing to think through that partnership. And that again, is a, a way to share information that's very different and new for our campus. Mm -hmm. um, and I may have missed this because um, I ran really quick to do some um, bedtime uh, cuddling, but um, we use Rue Groups a lot, which is our kind of campus engagement platform. Mm -hmm. And I think we've been pretty, we've integrated that into the uh, new first semester experience um, mm -hmm. course that has really helped, I think, with onboarding students. Um, in the past, we um, our institution hasn't been always as um, strong about continuing uh, like a welcoming process. So, and Sarah or others on like on the on the meeting would be able to help. But I think that that's helped to for student organizations to feel a little bit more like what they're doing matters and people know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And it's not just kind of stuck on some hub that nobody's ever looking at. So I think there's some promise and some really good systems that thankfully we're able to invest in this year that it's helping, so. Yeah, I, I so I looked over a little bit your rue groups and I think we use the same software, which is Engage, I believe. Um, and yeah, so, Engage, Anthology. Yep. Yep. whatever they're called now. Collegiate language um, started as, yeah. So um, we've been using it for years um, now. And, and so, um, you know, we, we find it very helpful um, as well. Um, and, I, and I think that it's our major platform for students to find out what's going on um, on campus. And we use their app, um, which is, I think, um, if you all have their Cork app. Um, yeah. And so- It's so just we, hard because I think students want to, Again, they want to sit in the dining hall together. They want to mm -hmm. walk to a program together or be able to do some of those basic, at least for my college experience, for like tenets of making friends and Dr. RP and I've talked a lot about this, but just like sense of belonging. You know, you you walk in, you walk with your friends from your residence hall to the dining center, or mm -hmm. you meet somebody in class and say, I want, can you be my study buddy? And it's just a lot more challenging to like, have strategy around helping them to create those spaces and that's mm -hmm. been something that like we've been trying to do in little ways but i'm not sure i'm hopeful that we can be more successful with this semester sure yeah it's it's certainly been just an, an overwhelming challenge um you know uh, for us to keep students engaged um you know and 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 so what i want you all to, to know is that everybody's having the same struggles across the country and so it is it is not your school alone it, it is everybody and um and i never ever usually say this because i want everyone to you know to kind of knock everything out of the park, but it's okay to lower your expectations a little bit for your programs. Like it's okay, you know, like, um, and you know, setting realistic goals um, is really critical. Um, and so, you know, when I, when I talk to my um, graduate interns, one of the things that we always talk about and even our student groups, obviously, you know, is setting realistic goals for, for what you want to get out of, out of the program. Um, you know, we often talk to students and they're like, oh, you know, 2000 people are going to come to this event and, and like, that's great, but it's probably not going to happen, you know, and, and then they're disappointed. Um, so, you know, it's kind of like trying to get them to understand what reality is a little bit in, in this environment. Um, and to try and, you know, um, and, and I don't want to use the term lower expectations, um, but trying to bring a more realistic approach, um, you know, to it and, and teaching them, you know, the production of it, the, you know, um, putting together an event is, is 
a major learning, you know, opportunity. Um, so yes, we want people to be there and, and all that kind of stuff because people put so much value on that. And, and that should be one of the goals, obviously. Um, and in normal times, I would say that it is critical. Um, but in these times where, you know, we want to make sure that, um, you know, that, that they don't feel disappointed, um, you know, because maybe 15 people showed up to their virtual event, you know, it's okay. Um, the other thing that I think we always need to focus on um, when uh, with this, and I'm curious to hear some of the things that you all uh, maybe have been doing um, in is marketing. I think that student affairs folks, um, you know, it's probably our biggest weakness. Like we're, we're great at talking with people and, and, and managing events and all that kind of stuff. Um, I think marketing is, is one of our, is one of our challenges and usually one of the things that we don't, um, uh, do as well as we would um, have liked to. Um, and one of the things that we started to do this semester, do a, uh, a newsletter, a monthly, a monthly newsletter, not to the students. Um, it's specifically targeted to the faculty. Um, and so we send out a monthly newsletter of what we're doing and how we're trying to engage students um, and it is targeted um, directly to the faculty. And so we send it out online. There's a faculty listserv that all the faculty are on and it goes right um, to the faculty. We're also gonna be printing out um, some of those newsletters. Um, and just because we know that they're engaging with students on a daily basis. So the more that they know about what we're doing, um, the better off, you know, I think we are. And so that's one of a, a newer initiative that, that we started. We've always kind of partnered with faculty on different events and, and that kind of stuff, but we're really targeting some of our marketing directly at faculty right now. Um, so just one idea and one, one of the, the new initiatives, but we've been doing the traditional, you know, social media, posters, banners, you know, um, emailing, uh, you know, we do um, texting, um, all of that, you know, kind of stuff. Um, a lot of through, a lot of it's through Engage or, or through the, you know, you call it Rue Group. Um, you know, we do a lot of that stuff um, as well. Um, and then we also have started to use on Engage the last year we started to use it before all COVID happened, but the sign in feature so where the, you can, um, they can have like their, their QR code um, and you can scan them into events and so then we kind of have a record and we can also then uh, market, you know, to those folks directly as well. Um, so we've been doing a lot of that kind of stuff but I'm curious to hear what, uh, what you guys are doing and then I'll um, kind of leave it at that and I'll leave some opportunity for some questions at the end. And I think that we then have to wrap up because I don't, the worst thing is when people go too long, so. Um, well, I'm kind of lucky, I guess, in the stance that I majored in marketing for my undergrad. So I feel like I have more knowledge about that. And I do run the social media for the Office of Student Involvement. We need um, you but, in the field. Like, like. <laughs> Um, but right now, the problem that I kind of see is when I just look through our social media, there's so many just UMKC pages, whether it's there's all the student orgs have pages, all the campus departments, all of the academic departments. And it just I feel like it gets confusing for students because they don't know who to follow or where to go. So I don't know what it's like at your campus, if it's more centralized or how you handle that, because right now it's just I feel like it's kind of a mess. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of social media accounts. Um, I think there's a couple of us, and you know, on campus that do it that do it better than others. And so you can see, like, there's a lot of groups, but a lot of groups have like you know, 15, 20 followers, you know, kind of a thing. Um, so there's a few of us uh, that have several thousand followers, or or you know, a couple, you know, a thousand, fifteen hundred. Um, followers. Um, and then one of the things that's worked out pretty well for us is we have, there's a CCSU official page. Um, and when, when something good is posted, you know, um, there is, you know, it's obviously at their discretion that, you know, our marketing team at the university runs it. Um, and there's a lot of people on there, um, they will repost our stuff. Um, so there's a lot of retweeting or a lot of reposting. Um, I don't know what the word is for Instagram. Is it just reposting um, from Instagram? Um, but there's a lot of that going on. And so 
I think it's kind of understood in our campus that if you like something, please repost it um, so it gets out to as many people um, as we can. Um, it was really, I'll tell you a really funny quick story because like the other day um, we had an outdoor ice skating event on campus with like artificial ice and you know so people came out and, and did ice skating and and that kind of thing um, and our um, the CCSU official picked up our Instagram post and, and put it on on their site and then the next day it was taken down and so I called the director of marketing and I'm like what what happened why did you guys take down our post She's like, oh, it's a really funny story. We got the, the woman who was in it was, um, there was a picture of two people ice skating, holding hands. Um, and the woman called the, the office of marketing and was like, can you take it down? I'm holding hands with somebody that's not my boyfriend. <laughs> so, so I'm like, oh, well, if that's the reason it came down, fine. I just thought we did something wrong. I didn't know what was going on. It was just weird that our post got taken down all of a sudden. So that's a little funny story, <laughs> so. Um, but anyway, um, are there any questions before we, before we wrap up? I have one. Um, I also run the social media pages for the basketball team, mm -hmm. but unlike Sarah, I have like no marketing experience. So I was just curious as to how you guys run your giveaways. Like how have you had people enter them or like what were the ways that built the most engagement? Sure. So a lot of times they're done. Um, so we do a lot of photo contests we'll do. So, you know, like one, the other day we did like um, show, you know, the students all moved back on campus. So um, we had like a, a decorating, you know, contest, show us the best decorating room. We showed, you know, we did one the other day that was like, show us your blue devil spirit without saying you're a blue devil. So they just had to, you know, take a bunch of pictures. And I think that's a trend going on right now in, in social media. Um, and um, we've done um, um, any kind of thing, like for us, anytime we give away money, people tend to participate. Um, you know, so when, when we give free stuff away, um, you know, and sometimes it's, you know, they're, you know, $50, $100 gift cards. And, and, and again, I don't know what your budget is like, so that can be somewhat challenging and we do them on a, on a fairly regular basis. Um, you know, but even a promise of, you know, tickets to a, to a game in the future, maybe if you don't have budget, you know, and hopefully one day we're allowed to come watch, you know, games live, you know, and that kind of stuff. Um, the other thing that I will say is, and, and again, I'm not, you know, a marketing expert, but one of the tools that we use a lot to make our stuff look good, um, if, if you use like um, Canva, um, you know, um, and so we use Canva all the time. Like my, my interns are like Canva experts and, and they're not graphics people. Like they, they've just, it's pretty simple to use. Um, and we use a lot of Canva, you know, type of things, which makes your, your, your stuff look professional. Um, so I think the more professional that you can make it look, um, you know, the better off that, that you are, um, there. Um, and then what I would encourage you to do is like, we do everything through our story. So like you, a lot of times you, you post and so we'll put like, Hey, add to our story and they'll, they'll keep adding, you know, people will post and we keep adding it to our story. And so then people keep seeing that, um, over and over again. Um, so, and I would, if you want to go on our, our, on our Instagram and check it out, it's, um, it's CCSU S A L D, um, and you can see all the stuff that that we're that we're constantly posting and feel free to steal any ideas there. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Are there any other questions? No. Well, I can um, Sarah has my email address. Um, and so if there are questions in the future, um, I can also I'll just put it right in the chat. Okay. Also, while everyone has their screen on, can we take a picture? If everyone will smile. All right. Oops. Okay. Three, two, one. Oops, froze. My screen froze. Okay. Ready? Three, two, one. Cool. Got Is that it. your um your mascot like when you guys do that? Nice. Like roo up kangaroo. Cool. That's awesome. Um, and so also um, you know, I would encourage um 
uh, all of you to, um, you know, when you're, when you're job searching, if you are, um, you know, if you just need somebody, you know, sometimes doing a mock interview or anything like that, you know, um, I know I worked with Sarah and did a mock interview with her as part of the, the NACA program, but, um, you know, feel free to kind of look me up and, and sometimes it's good to get someone that you don't know and at all um, and more than happy to help out, um, you know, um, higher ed students in, 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 in their pursuits. So, um, you know, feel free, we're, we're all friends now. So you can all, uh, you know, call, call me up, ask me any questions, um, more than happy to help um, as you move forward in your um, job search and hopefully, um, you know, I think actually, and I tell my interns this all the time, I actually think that you guys are going to be graduating, hopefully, in the next year or this year and, um, you know, at, at a fairly good time. I, I do think the this pandemic will, will will end. I do think budgets will start to come back one day in, in higher ed and people will start hiring again. So I think there will be a flurry of hiring um, in the next year and a half. Um, so, so I think you guys will be in good shape. Um, higher ed's definitely changing, um, but they still need people. Um, to, to run it. So, um, so don't, don't, uh, don't be worried. I think my interns are always like, are we going to be able to get jobs? I'm like, yeah, you'll be fine. Don't worry. You're, you're, you're going to be good. All right. And so, uh, and I just want to thank Sarah for, for inviting me. Um, this is great. I, I don't know how helpful I've been, but um, I enjoy certainly talking to other people in, in higher ed and especially um, um, students and Kim keep up uh, that doctoral program. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. I've got some good support systems here. So. Cool. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. I really enjoyed this event. So this is really great. And thank, thank you. you for everyone that came to the event for HESA. Um, I will send, we'll send out more information about future events, but if you're not um, a member of our Ruby Groups page, you can go join that as well. If you just look up HESA. Thanks, Scott.